hello all so here we are continuing the third unit natural resources of aec paper evs1 delhi university so in the last video lecture we had covered um, in natural resources four resources right so in this unit you are having you are having six units to be sorry six resources to be studied the first four were forest water mineral and food resources which we have already discussed in the last class so in this class we will be discussing land and energy resources okay so land resources all types of land forms on which human being depend are considered here uh, dependent for livelihoods okay hill valley plain river basin etc with careful utilization land can be considered as a renewable resource it is limited as other resources and getting depleted by uh, depletion of forest overgrazing which led to which leads to wasteland generation we cannot live comfortably on sea snow or space i mean no more we can live comfortably other than land right so we need proper land using plannings land also important uh, for our ecosystem and valuable biodiversity 5 to h uh, sorry 5 to 7 uh, mega hectare land worldwide is added every year to existing degraded farmland the reasons are more intensive farming soil eroded by wind and rain over irrigation more chemical fertilizers urbanization and all diversity in soil types leads to diversity of crops hence soil erosion is the problem for agriculture too soil erosion increase due to increased rate of deforestation more problem of soil erosion can be seen on steep hill slopes as in himalayas and western ghats these areas are called ecologically sensitive areas okay that is important and we can expect mcqs from there okay the soil itself is a is act as a factor for nutrient recycling in the atmosphere therefore the loss of soil include various forms of life such as soil micro uh, microorganisms bacteria fungi worms and insects we need more and more plantation to stop soil erosion so this is how um, soil erosion like when pictured the reasons are shown so you can take a screenshot or print screen and refer this see so this is what happens when it was a forest land right all these are uh, evapotranspiration precipitation interception everything we have covered in our last unit okay in the hydrological cycle i guess yes we have covered it already so this is what when it was a forest and after clear cut <coughs> that is after the deforestation little interception and evapotranspiration hmm? we know in evapotranspiration the water is lost from the that the plants lost water to the air but when the plants are cut evapotranspiration is reduced and more water is run off with the soil because the roots of the plants can hold uh, some portion of soil so there are no plants matlab there are no roots to hold the soil hmm? then after conversion to farmland this is the third one i mean this is the first this is the second after clear cut it is converted to farmland again less interception less evapotranspiration then so increased surface runoff and soil erosion from freshly plowed plant plowed land then after urbanization yeah directly <laughs> all its to the water no all its eroded to the water only large increase in runoff from urban surfaces and storm uh, sewers so next is conservation of soil soil conservation means checking soil erosion and improving soil fertility by adapt adopting various methods the first has uh, fertility can be maintained by adding manure and fertilizers regularly as well as by rotation of crop then making compost from your kitchen waste and use it in your kitchen garden then planting of trees and vegetation afforestation or reforestation reduces soil erosion by both water and wind uh, that do not irrigate the plants using a strong flow of water it will wash off the soil uh, 
better use sprinkling irrigation and drip irrigation so that's all uh, on the land resource next we are stepping to energy resource this is the last resource that you have to uh, study in this unit with this the unit is we are done with this unit so we have discussed uh, what is non renewable what is renewable energy and all in the last unit so i won't be going deep on that again and again you know what the basics are because we have already covered it you don't need to study more and more definitions you can simply study one definition which uh, you find very well it can be from this unit or last unit you can select it according to your choice okay so what is energy energy in basic terms is the capacity to do work or transfer heat or to set things in motion all living organisms need energy in the form of food right ultimate source of energy is the primary source of energy is sun so the radiant energy of sun eh? the chemical energy eh? it's converted through photosynthesis by green plants and when we eat green plants or when we eat the herbivores herbivores who eat the uh, the consumers who eat the green plants we get that energy the energy the radiant energy of uh, of sun is transformed to us the same happens with the chemical energy in uh, water bodies in aquatic uh, ecosystem as well uh, that is through algae mm? the chemical uh, radiant energy of sun is fixed um, and fishes get that that all. so uh, but the humans require huge amount of energy to sustain their civilization to run their cars to process materials to keep their houses warm or cool and many more to fulfill the energy requirement human development when human develop a mode of transportation and this is electricity electricity use has shown 100 fold increase during 2 3 last 2 3 decades in many countries due to continuous electricity requirement the fossil fuel based electricity generation has increased from 20 to 30% away from burning fossil fuels the electricity can be generated by burning wood garbage trash as well as from flowing water wind earth heat sunlight and nuclear fission so below uh, there are short notes on what solar power wind power and all are but we will discuss them in detail in the coming slides so i am not going with the uh, the six uh, renewable energy sources now but if you want you can note down solar power geothermal biomass wind power hydroelectric power and tidal power we are, we will go in detail in the coming slides so i am not going through that now At present almost 2 billion people worldwide have no access to electricity and those who have access their individual demand increases day by day there are large amount of energy loss during transmission of electricity and this ultimately add more amount of greenhouse gas into the environment any type of wastage of electricity is directly linked to the environmental degradation the economic growth and development require more amount of energy and hence the consumption of energy is an indication of index of economic development in spite of having only 5% of world's population usa consume 1/4 of global energy resource now two types of energy are there non renewable and renewable non renewable means they are exhaustible they they cannot be quickly replenished it takes thousand and thousand of years for them to make again the coal petroleum natural gas nuclear fuels and all then renewable it can be generated it is inexhaustible but remember if you are over exploiting the renewable resources if you are over exploiting the uh, fresh water or forest mm -hmm, beyond the nature's capacity to regenerate them to replenish them to make them then that will also get ended up so uh, these four are the non renewable energy resources just have a note on this um, diagram i won't be detailing it because this is an evs class not a physics or chemistry class uh, the video gets more lengthy so you, you can note it for your own sake um, next is coal coal was formed 255 to 350 million years ago in the hot damp regions of the earth during the carboniferous age sorry 
So the first non-renewable resource we are studying is coal. The ancient plants got converted into peat and coal over millions of years of time. There are mainly three types of coal. Anthracite, hard coal, 90% carbon. Bituminous, soft coal, 60 to 80% carbon. Lignite, brown coal, 60 to 70%. Okay. India has about 5% of world's coal. But the Indian coal is not that good in terms of heat capacity. Anthracite coal uh, that only occurs in Jammu and Kashmir. Kala coat mining there. Okay. How was coal made? So, this is the so swamp 300 million years ago. It was a swamp before the dinosaurs. Many giant plants died in swamps, so then it came as water. So, 100 million years ago, hmm? so the dirt and the dead plants came under sedimented under that is over millions of years. The plants were buried under water and dirt, then rocks and dirt came. So, the Nietzsche one, like the, the one and below, heat and pressure turned the dead plants into coal. This takes millions and millions of years, okay. The next non renewable energy we are studying is petroleum. So, how are oil and gas made? Tiny sea plants and animals died and were buried on the ocean floor 400 million years ago. Over time, they were covered by layers of silt and sand. You can see that this is the burial of the uh, dead plants and animal remains. Silt and sand are covered above them. Okay, over millions of years, the remains were buried deeper and deeper. The enormous heat and pressure turned them into oil and gas. Today, we drill down through layers of sand, silt and rock to reach the rock formations that contain oil and gas deposit. You know rig and all, right? So, there are 13 countries in the world having 67% of the petroleum reserves which together form OPEC, Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. With current utilization, the world's crude oil reserves are estimated to get exhausted in just 40 years. Crude petroleum has, I mean, is a complex mixture of, a mixture of alkene hydrocarbons. Hence, it gets purified and refined by the process of fractional distillation which uh, process different constituents separate out at the different temperature. Variety of products form namely petroleum, gas, kerosene, petrol, diesel, fuel oil, lubricating oil, paraffin wax, asphalt and plastics etc. These are various petroleum products. Okay. Okay, <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm slightly sick. <coughs> so you can refer to this diagram. <coughs> Liquefied petroleum gas is odorless, but in our domestic gas cylinders gives a um, foul smell. This is due to, we know that in our house, in the cylinders and all. Mm -hmm. Domestic gas cylinders, though LPG is odorless, when it, it when it gets leaked, we'll having uh, we'll feel a foul smell. So this is due to ethyl mercaptan, a foul smell gas, foul smelling gas added to LPG so that any leakage of LPG from cylinder can be detected instantaneously. The main component of LPG is butane with propane and ethane. Oil fields in India are located in Big Boy, Assam, Gujarat Plains, and Bombay High. Offshore areas in uh, Delta coast of Godavari, Krishna, Kaveri and Mahanadi. So next is natural gas. It is mainly composed of methane, 95% methane with small amount of propane and ethane. It is a fossil fuel mostly found with oil deposit. Natural gas is the cleanest fossil fuel. Russia has maximum reserves uh, 40% followed by Iran 14% and USA 7%. Natural gas reserves are found in association with all the oil fields in India. Natural gas is used as a domestic and industrial fuel. It's used as a fuel in thermal power plants for generating electricity. Compressed natural gas, CNG, is being used as an alternative source to petrol and diesel for transport of uh, vehicles. Delhi has totally switched over to CNG. 
synthetic natural gas SNG is a mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen it is connecting link between a uh, fossil fuel and substituted natural gas next is effect of coal and petroleum on environment the process of oil and natural gas drilling processing uh, transport and utilization have serious environmental consequences the leaks of gas and oil where the water and air are polluted and the accidental accidental fires that may go on burning for days or weeks accidental damage of ships create huge impact on ocean and aquatic animals uh, exxon valdez sang at the cost of alaska in 1989 just, and just referred to the devastation that it caused on environment when the fossil fuel burn it release various um, gas such as carbon dioxide oxides of sulfur nitrogen and carbon monoxide which cause air pollution the burning of coal produce various suspended particulate matter spm and various global warming gases so this is a pictureization of timeline of uh, like recovery from the exxon valdez oil spill now the tanker exxon valdez spilled almost 11 million gallons of oil into alaska's prince william sound on march 24th 1989 injuring 28 types of animals plants and marine habitats how long has it taken them to recover from the spill 25 years later which one have not yet recovered um so here is a timeline okay recovering species in the unknown status still some are in the unknown status and some didn't recover killer whale herring pigeon gillimots gillimots these didn't recover okay so next is nuclear energy the energy produced from nuclear fission that is splitting and nuclear fusion that is combination nuclear energy is the clean form of energy in the sense that it does not cause air pollution and require very little fuel it can be an important alternative energy source but due to some factors its contribution in the world as an energy source is still small high cost of building nuclear plant security problem like how to keep uranium and plutonium uh, out of the wrong people it's not our it is out okay then waste disposal problem uh, then nuclear accidents the chernobyl disaster okay in the during the soviet union 1986 so next is renewable energy resources nine renewable energy resources are there and we'll be studying them in detail first is solar energy so sun is the ultimate source of energy directly or indirectly for all the forms of energy due to nuclear fusion reaction occurring inside the sun it releases enormous quantities of uh, energy in the form of heat and uh, light traditionally we have been using solar energy in various our daily practices forms in our daily practices now we have several techniques for harnessing solar energy solar heat collectors solar cells solar cookers solar water heaters solar furnaces solar power plants so this is so just have a check on this is a great uh, tied solar electric system uh, you can refer to the diagram and not the functioning i'm not giving explanations or notes on the functioning of the techniques or the devices of solar energy okay you can note it from the what to say diagram itself next is solar heat collectors this is also collect uh, i mean refer to the diagram next is solar cell 
Okay. It's the steak is clean, so that is better, I guess. Then salt our cooker. And we'll also discuss the previous year question papers later. So if in that any of the uh, the functioning of uh, solar devices, I mean the devices which use solar energy is asked, I'll prepare notes and discuss. We'll discuss those in the previous year question paper discussion videos. Okay. Solar water heater. Solar furnace. Solar power plant. So solar energy is harnessed on large scale by using concave reflectors which cause boiling of water to produce steam. India has listed uh, into top 5 uh, biggest solar plant in the world. The solar farm in Tamil Nadu has a capacity of 648 megawatts and cover an area of 10 square kilometers. There are other two biggest solar park has been planned in Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka which is 1000 megawatt and 2000 megawatt capacity respectively. Next is wind energy. The high speed winds have a lot of energy in them as kinetic energy due to their motion. A total capacity of 22,465 megawatt has been established up to December 2014 mainly in Tamil Nadu, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka and Rajasthan. India now ranks fifth in the world after China, China, USA, Germany and Spain in grid connected wind power installations. They refer to this and all these state-wise demonstration projects, okay? <coughs> Next is hydropower. Hydroelectric plant, the functioning is here. You can check with any YouTube videos like if you have that curiosity inside you to know how it is functioning. So the water flowing in a river is collected by constructing a big dam where the water is stored and allowed to fall from a height. The high speed water flow towards the blades of turbine which rotate the generator and produce electricity. There are various micro, mini and small hydropower projects uh, which were installed by Ministry of New and Renewable Energy on river in hilly regions for harnessing the hydro energy on a small scale. Hydropower, hydropower is a clean form of energy and normally these projects are multi-purpose projects helping in controlling flood used for irrigation, navigation, etc. However, big dams are often associated with number of environmental impacts. For example, Sardar Sarovar uh, uh, Dam and the Narmada Bachavo Andolan movement. Okay, we have studied that I guess. Yes, in environmentalism and all. Next is ocean energy. 70% of Earth's surface covered by oceans and represent an enormous amount of energy in the form of wave, uh, tidal, marine current and thermal gradient. It is an emerging technology and for a country like India which have long coastline, it can be efficient source for electric power generation. We know our coastline, right? It is really, really big, really, really long. So, yeah. A variety of different technologies are currently under development throughout the world to harness this energy in all its forms including waves 40,000 megawatt, tides 9,000 megawatt and thermal gradients 1,80,000 megawatt. Next is geothermal energy. Geothermal energy is heat stored in earth's crust and being used for electric, uh, electric generation and also for direct heat application worldwide since the beginning of last century. So the heat stored in the earth's crust are used for electric generation. That's it. Geo means earth. So heat in the earth. Thermal means heat. So heat in the earth is used, as, is used for the electric generation. USA, Philippines, Indonesia, Mexico, Italy and Ireland are leading countries have availing commercial exploitation with world production of 12,000 megawatt. For harnessing geothermal energy in the country, the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy has been supported uh, like supporting R&D, research and development on exploration activities and resource assessment during last 25 years. Ministry of New and Renewable Energy is targeting for devel uh, deployment of geothermal capacity of 1000 megawatt in the initial phase till 2022. Next is biomass energy. Biomass has always been an important energy source for the country considering the benefits it offers. 
It is renewable, widely available, carbon neutral and has the potential to provide significant employment in rural areas. Ministry of New and Renewable Energy has realized the potential and role of biomass energy in the Indian context and hence has initiated a number of programs for promotion of efficient technologies for its use in various sectors. For efficient utilization, biomass, bio uh, gas, ba I mean biogas based co-generation in sugar mills and biomass uh, power generation have been taken up under biomass power and co-generation program biomass materials used for power generation include bagasse uh, rice husk straw cotton stock um, coconut shell soya husk de-oiled cakes coffee waste jute waste groundnut shell sawdust etc the current availability of biomass in india is estimated at about 500 million metric tons per year Next is biogas. Biogas production is a clean, low-carbon technology for efficient management and conversion of organic waste into clean, renewable biogas and organic fertilizer source. Biogas obtained by anaerobic digestion of cattle dung and other loose and leafy organic matters or waste can be used as energy source for cooking, lighting and other applications like refrigeration, electricity generation and transport applications. Next is biofuel. To meet the increasing energy needs of the country and to provide energy security, national policy on biofuel was announced in December 2009. The research and development on cultivation, processing and production of biofuel was projected in national pol policy on biofuels. It addresses for the use of biofuels as a blending mandate of 20% ethanol and biodiesel by 2017. Gasohol is a mixture of ethanol and gasoline, that is petrol. Methanol is also a clean and alternative fuel that can be used in place of gasoline and diesel. Methanol can be easily obtained from woody plants and ethanol from grain-based or sugar-containing containing plants. Hydrogen as a fuel. So this is the last slide, I guess. Hydrogen as a clean fuel and an energy carrier that can be used for a broad range of applications as possible, substitute to liquid and fossil fuels. Due to the high calorific value, hydrogen can serve as excellent fuel. Production of hydrogen is possible by thermal dissociation, photolysis or electrolysis of water. Safe handling is required for using hydrogen as a fuel. Also, it is difficult to store and transport. Presently, hydrogen is used in the form of liquid hydrogen as a fuel in spaceships. So that's it. We are done with all the energy, I mean natural resources and we are done with the third unit. So in next video, we will start with the fourth unit. That is the last unit of your paper AEC1 Environmental Science. Okay, that is pollution, I guess. And with two, another two uh, video lectures, we will be completing the whole syllabus of AEC1 ABS Delhi University. So thank you. Happy learning.